Hello and welcome everyone to Infinity Learn by Shri Chaitanya. I am Ravindram, your physics faculty and today students I am going to discuss the 25th January 2023 AITS physics portion and the paper seems to be pretty easy exactly up to the standard of the J double J mains and uh, as you know already know that J mains is happening these days and today was the second day of J double E mains and the third attempt okay right so third session was there not attempt third session was there and second day and we have collected a lot of you know remarks from the students and we have got the feedback that physics paper is coming extremely easy purely formula based questions and uh, there are no tricky questions plain simple formula based question so if you are going to practice only and only like at least 3 4 questions of every formula 3 4 good questions of every formula you just practice there is nothing who can stop you from gaining at least 90 marks out of 100 in physics okay let's keep begin with this question an expression for a dimensionless quantity p so p is a dimensionless quantity right p is a dimensionless quantity and in the question right they have given p is equal to alpha by beta they are constants so obviously they will be dimension is log of kt by beta x okay this is the question now they want us to find out the dimensions of alpha okay so dimensions of alpha first of all dimensions of alpha and beta will be same try to understand here what will happen students this quantity is dimensionless so this has to be dimensionless and this has to be dimensionless and this has to be dimensionless so all these four things encircled in the white are dimensionless quantities so first of all if alpha and beta say p is dimensionless so alpha by beta is dimensionless so if this is dimensionless okay so we can simply say that alpha's dimensions and beta's dimensions are same. Now, let's come to this point. Kt is what? We know that kinetic energy is 3 by 2 Kt, right? So, Kt technically represents the energy, right? So, it represents energy. So, Kt by beta into x. So, Kt is energy, right? So, technically beta x will also be energy, right? So, finally we got this info that beta x is energy. Now, energy or work we can say, dimensions of energy, work and heat are same. So, beta into displacement, beta into displacement is work, let us say work. So, beta will be what? Force. So, dimensions of beta will be equal to the dimensions of force, yes or no? Because work is what? Force into displacement. So, beta into displacement is force into displacement. So, displacement, displacement dimensionally gets cancelled. So, beta's dimension is equal to force's dimension. Now, we know the formula for the force dimension. What is that formula? M1 L1 T minus 2. Okay. So, which option will be correct? Third option. Do you understand this guys? So, it is pretty easy and pretty simple, right? Okay. So, this is how you will solve this particular question. Okay, let's let's move ahead now. A person is standing in an elevator in which situation he experiences weight loss. It's very simple. We all know that when the lift is accelerated downwards, right, then the normal reaction acting on the boy or the body will be m times g minus a when it is coming down. And when n is lesser than mg, then the person will start feeling weightless okay so when the elevator comes downward with a constant acceleration third is an object is thrown vertically upwards at its maximum height see what happens at its maximum height its velocity becomes zero so technically its momentum will also become zero so obviously momentum will become zero no need to see for other three options right now here this is a good question this is a good one okay so in the complete paper this question i will regard as a good question so let me solve it for you guys so the question is very simple it is coming like this okay when the object is here so there will be one component this right so this angle is alpha 
okay. So this is mg, right? This angle is alpha. So this angle is 90 minus alpha. So this component will be mg sine alpha. Is it clear? Now one more component will be there, which is this, and this is normal. Okay. So this is normal. So and there will be a centripetal acceleration AC here. Okay. So you will say. Normal minus mg sin alpha is equals to m into v square by r, right? Clear? Now, what is n? So n will be mg sin alpha plus sorry plus m into v square by r. Now the challenge is to find out v square by r in this question. So what we will do? Now look here. The object came down here, so it came down by a height of h. If this is alpha, so what is h? H will be r sine alpha. So you will say loss in potential energy is mgh is equals to gain in kinetic energy. Can we say this? So loss in the potential energy is mgh. Gain in the kinetic energy is half mv square. So it will be mg r sine alpha is equals to mv square by two, right? So m and m gets cancelled. So v square by r is equals to two g sine alpha. So using this, we can get the right answer. We will say that n is equals to mg sine alpha. Plus two m g sine alpha, right? Because v square by r is what two g sine alpha. So normal will be three m g sine alpha, and centripetal force will be m v square by r, which will be two m g sine alpha, right? So if you take the ratio of n by f. n by f c so this comes out to be 3 by 2 which is a constant that means the ratio of n and centripetal force does not depend upon alpha so this is a pretty good explanation of this question and i hope you have understood so in this question we can say in this question we can say that n by f c remains constant okay so which graph will be correct if this remains constant then automatically we will say that this graph is correct automatically we will say this graph is correct clear everyone understood now a thin circular ring of mass this is a concept of angular momentum conservation so you will say if this is the ring right so what is its initial angular momentum you will say m into what it is i omega right so i is mr square into omega initial angular momentum now if you fix two small point masses here so it will become capital m plus 2m into r square into omega dash yes or no so according to conservation of angular momentum we will say angular momentum before keeping these two point masses and after the keeping these two point masses will be this we will say that R square and R square will get cancelled, and our final answer will be omega is two, so two m upon capital M plus two times small m will be omega dash. Okay, so which option is correct? Third option is correct. Okay, so I hope you got this answer correctly. Now the variation of g due to gravity. This is known to all of us. that first option will be correct why because when small r is less than equal to capital r g dash is equal to or we can say it is directly proportional to small r okay and when r is greater than capital r then g dash is inversely proportional to r square so 
बिफोर कैपिटल आर इट विल बी अ स्ट्रेट लाइन आफ्टर कैपिटल आर इट विल बी हाइपर बोला ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज करेक्ट नाउ द एफिशियंसी ऑफ कार नॉट इंजन सो वॉट इज टी एल लोअर टेम्परेचर इज जीरो डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड और टू सेवेंटी थ्री कैलविन वॉट इज टी एच हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड और थ्री सेवेंटी थ्री कैलविन सो एफिशियंसी विल बी वन माइनस टी एल बाय टी एच राइट इन टू हंड्रेड परसेंटेजेस सो इट इज वन माइनस टू सेवेंटी थ्री अपॉन थ्री सेवेंटी थ्री इंटू हंड्रेड परसेंटेज ओके कूल सो इट विल बी हंड्रेड बाय थ्री सेवेंटी थ्री इंटू हंड्रेड परसेंटेजेस सो इट आफ्टर सॉल्व इट कम्स आउट नियर अबाउट ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट एट वन परसेंटेज ओके so this is the answer so it was a very simple question right the time period of what is the time period initially 2 by root over l by g and guys i am expecting that you have already studied these questions tried these questions in examination that is why i am directly giving you the solution without wasting any much time because if you uh, waste like one and a half hour in discussion of one subject only so it will take like four and a half hours for the discussion three hours for the paper then when will you get time for your studies okay that is why i am keeping it short right so time period is given t if the lift accelerates vertically upwards see if the lift is going up with an acceleration a then g effective becomes g plus a so it is technically g plus g by 6 in this question so it is 7 g by 6 do you understand right so new time period will be 2 pi root over l by G effective will be seven G by six, so T dash will be root over six by seven times T. Third option is correct. Okay, so this is a very simple question and a very simple solution. A thermally insulated vessel contains an ideal C. They have given us gamma. Gamma is given to us here. So what is gamma? Gamma is one point four. So what is CV? CV is R upon gamma minus one, right? So C V will be R upon point four. Point four. That means it is five R by two. Point number one. Now, what is the energy? See, they are saying that the complete kinetic energy of the gas, complete kinetic energy of the gas is going into raising the temperature or changing the internal energy of the gas, right? So, what is the formula for change in internal energy of the gas? It is F by two n R delta T, or we can also say n C V delta T, right? And they are saying that change in kinetic energy is half into total mass of the gas into V square, right? So we will write it like this: n into C V is five R by two into delta T is equals to half into m V square. Right now, what is this? Two and two will get cancelled. Okay, n is nothing but total mass upon molecular mass. This will get cancelled. So delta T will be how much? Right? Come on, tell me. Delta T will be how much? From here, we will say delta T will be v square by five m v m v square by five r. okay so delta t will be molecular mass into v square by 5r is there any option second option correct okay i hope you understand this right guys cool fantastic so this is a two capacitors are given obviously so what after connecting them they will be at a common potential right right so we will say the formula of common potential v not is C one V one plus C two V two upon C one plus C two, right? So here V two is zero, right? Because they have given us that one capacitor is fully charged, another one is completely discharged. So it is C one V plus zero upon C one plus C two, right? Now this is the common potential after connecting. So what is the new charge? Q2 dash it will be C2 into common potential. C2 into common potential, so it will become 
सी वन सी टू इंटू वी अपॉन सी वन प्लस सी टू दिस विल बी क्यू टू डैश कॉटेड सो विच ऑप्शन इज करेक्ट फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज करेक्ट आई होप यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फाइंड आउट द कॉमन पोटेंशियल वंस यू नो द कॉमन पोटेंशियल मल्टीप्लाई इट विद द कपैसिटेंस टू गेट द चार्ज ऑन द सेकेंड कैपैसिटी दिस इज प्योरली फॉर्मुला बेस्ड राइट वी हैव स्टडीड दीज थिंग्स इन इन आर क्लासेस सी नॉन पोलर मटीरियल डू नॉट हैव एनी परमानेंट डायपोल मोमेंट राइट बिकॉज इनिशियली वेन देर इज नो एक्सटर्नल फील्ड द पॉजिटिव एंड द नेगेटिव चार्ज इज सेंटर द सेंटर ऑफ द पॉजिटिव एंड नेगेटिव चार्ज दे कोइनसाइड दैट इज वाई देर इज नो नेट डायपोल मोमेंट सो दिस एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट बट द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग राइट When a non-polar material is placed in electric field, the center of the positive charge distribution of its individual atom or molecule coincides. No, it does not coincides. Does not. Does not. So, in the presence of external electric field, it does not coincide. In the absence of electric field, it coincides. So, which option is correct? Third option. Quite. Quite clear. Now, what they are asking is current. Simple. Flux is given. So what is EMF? D phi minus D phi by dt. Okay, so this will be how much? Minus 15 t square plus 8 t plus 2. Right? Now what is the time? Two seconds. So what is EMF induced? 15 into 2 square plus 8 into 2 plus 2. How much is this? Two to the four, four fifteen is a sixty. Sixty plus eight to the sixteen. Seventy-six plus two seventy-eight. Okay, so EMF will be minus seventy-eight volts. So what will be the current? Current will be EMF upon resistance. Okay, so it is fifteen point six ampere. Got it, everyone? so very simple question a very simple solution 15 fours are 60 right 8 into 2 16 plus 2 18 18 and 60 78 okay clear so an aluminum wire see this is very important when the length of a wire is changing only then what is the percentage change in resistance the formula is this see resistance is rho l by a but here we will be using this formula rho l square by volume right so when you stretch a wire when you stretch a wire the resistivity and volume do not change but the length changes right so we will say resistance is directly proportional to l square so for very minor changes right dr by r we can say it is 2 times dl by l so since the length the percentage change in length is very less 0.4 percentage so we can say that dr by dr by r percentage wise will be 2 into dl by l percentage wise so answer will be 2 into 0.4 percentage will be 0.8 percentage okay now a proton and alpha particle of the same speed enter in a uniform magnetic field see first of all What is the formula for radius? It is m v by b q. So if speeds are same and they are entering in the same magnetic field, so you will say radius is directly proportional to mass upon charge. Okay. So radius of alpha particle upon radius of proton will be equals to mass of alpha particle upon mass of proton into charge of proton upon charge of alpha particle. Now, what is the mass of alpha particle? It is four times the mass of proton, right? Charge of proton is E, and charge of alpha particle is two E. So, answer will be two is to one. Okay. So, which option is correct? Third option is correct. Got it, guys. so very simple if you remember the formula you will be simply able to solve it that is why i am saying the paper that is coming in jwe mains also is almost of the same level right the wavelength of the sound wave c frequency never changes for any wave on changing the medium we know that frequency remains constant whenever a wave changes its medium but the speed changes so in water na speed of sound in water is greater than speed of sound in air right that is why wavelength 
of sound in water is greater than wavelength of sound in air. Got it? So, velocity of sound in air is greater? Wrong reason, correct assertion. So, got it? The wavelength of the sound waves increases when they are reflected from air into water because in water their wave speed increases and hence their wavelength increases. Now you might be wondering sir why wavelength is increasing? See speed is equal to wavelength into frequency right. So if speed increases frequency is constant then obviously wavelength will also increase clear. Now in free space, see remember this thing, if the wave, if the size dimension of the object is uh, number 1, if it is greater than wavelength, then reflection will take place. If it is almost similar to wavelength, then diffraction will take place. But if D is lesser than wavelength, then scattering will take place. Please remember this. So, which option is correct? Okay, scattering. So, here because lambda is sorry, the size of an object is lambda by 100, it is far less than dimension of the object is far less than its wavelength. That is why this will be true. Okay, now this is very interesting. So, we will say since there uh, de Broglie wavelengths are same, that means their momentum are same, right. So, lambda of uh, proton, sorry, lambda of photon is equals to lambda of electron. H by momentum of photon is equals to H by momentum of electron, right? That means momentum of photon is equals to momentum of electron. That means mass of photon into speed of photon is equals to mass of electron into speed of electron. Okay. So, this is our equation number 1. Now, let us move on to the next step energy. So, they want us to find out energy of electron upon energy of photon. Now, what is energy of electron? Half m v e square upon energy of photon is mc square. So, we can write it like this half into m e v e upon m p h into c into v e upon c. Can we write it like this? Now, this is what in the numerator we have in the numerator we have the momentum in the denominator we have momentum and the momentum are same why because their wavelengths are same. So, what is the answer v upon 2 c. So, which option is correct? Second option. Did you understand? It is a very simple, very simple question and a very simple solution. Clear? Now, this is very interesting. See, U23892 gets converted to lead 206 and 82. Now, the atomic mass A can be changed only by the emission of alpha particle. By the emission of beta particle, we can change only this, the value of Z. So, technically, if we say that 238 minus 206 is how much? 32. That means, this is equals to delta A, right? So, delta A is brought with the emission of alpha particle only, okay? And if one alpha particle is emitted, then delta A is 4 units. So, let us say n alpha particles are emitted. So, n alpha into 4 is equals to 32. So, technically number of alpha particles emitted will be 8. Did you understand? So, 8 alpha particles where you can see? No, 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 this. So, no need to even check for beta particles. If alpha particles 8 are matching, then there is no problem. But still, you want to solve it. So, what will you do? 
suppose an examination they don't ask like this they give you two options with eight alpha particles so what will you do now check for delta z delta z is 10 but according to alpha particle delta z should be what there are eight and delta z is two for one alpha particle by a alpha particle bahar aata hai to delta z do hota hai it decreases by two so delta z okay so delta z due to alpha particle must have been 16 right but delta z due to beta particles will be by one beta particle it will be minus one alpha particle it will be minus two z reduces by two it increases by one right so we will say n alpha particle into delta z of alpha particle plus right plus n beta particles into delta z of beta particle must be equal to overall delta z overall delta z is minus 10 right it reduced by 10 so it will be minus 10 so this will be what 8 into minus 2 plus n beta into 1 is equals to minus 10 right so answer will be what 16 minus 10 is 6 so n beta comes out to be 6 got it okay clear or not so basically what happened if if suppose 8 alpha particles are coming out so a will reduce by 32 z will reduce by 16 but here z has reduced only by 10 that means it reduced by 16 and then increased by 6 to achieve 10. So that increment of 6 will happen because of beta emissions and for each beta emission there is increment of 1. So there are 6 beta particle emissions so as to give you increment of 6. Understood? Now this is very simple. Dynamic resistance is what? It is delta V by delta R. So, sorry, delta V by delta I. So, what is delta V? Delta V is 0 0.1 upon 5 and R2 will be 0 0.2 upon 50. So, you take the ratio of R1 is to R2. So, it will be 0 0.1 upon 5. 5 1s are 5 10s are 1s are 2s are answer will be 5 is to 1 okay second option correct got it now why 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 so see here what is delta v this is delta v point 0.1 what is delta i it is sorry it is 5 what is delta i 5 in the second case, what is delta V? 0.2. What is delta I? 50. Okay. Are you understanding this? This is how we solved it. Right? Sky wave signals are used for long distance radio. Correct. These signals are in general less stable than ground wave. Yes. Because, yeah, because the state of the ionosphere varies from R to R day to day. Because the state of ionosphere, the density of the ionosphere is constantly changing. That is why it becomes less stable. So, obviously, first statement, correct explanation. A fighter jet is flying horizontally at a certain altitude with the speed. See, fighter jet is flying with a speed of 200 meter per second. We want to hit this fighter plane. So, we will launch an object at an angle theta. Okay. In such cases, in such questions, remember we have to maintain we have to maintain the horizontal velocity of the fighter jet and the bomb same. If this component, if this is V, so if V cos theta is equal to velocity of the fighter plane, then obviously at some point definitely it will collide. Okay. It will collide. The horizontal because they have to be, you know, the bomb has to be below the fighter jet all the time. That means the horizontal velocity should be same. So it will be what? 400 into cos theta is equals to 200. So 
So, obviously cos theta will be half and theta will be 60 degrees, got it? So, in such questions remember the horizontal components must be remained same because we want the bomb to be always below the plane. So, technically to the bomb it will appear that it is vertically approaching the plane, that is all, ok. Now, a ball of mass 0.5 kg is dropped from a height 10 meter the height at which the magnitude of the velocity becomes equal to g, ok no problem. At a certain height, let us say it is displaced by v, sorry let, let us say it is displaced by ok or minus y, technically minus y. So, we will say v square is equals to u square plus 2 a delta y, right. Now, v is g square 0 plus 2 into minus g into displacement is minus y because acceleration due to gravity is downward that is why I take it negative and the displacement is happening downward again I will take it negative. So, g will be equals to g square will be equals to 2 g y ok. So, cancelled so y will be 5 meter and if overall height is 10 meter right. So, this h will be h will be equals to 10 minus y which will be 5 meter. So, answer is 5 can you see easy equations are coming. Now, here what they have given. So, from this information can we find out the value of y Young's modulus of elasticity it is stress upon strain. Stress is 20 upon strain is 10 to the power minus 10. So, this is 20 into 10 to the power 10 or 2 into 10 to the power 11 Newton per meter square. Now, you know the value of y. So, energy density is half into strain square into y, ok remember this formula. So, what is strain square? Strain is how much? 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 square it into strain y is 10 to the power this. So, minus 8 5 2 is a 10 and 2 2 cancels 5 5 is a 25 right. 25 it will be 25 into 10 to the power 3 joules per meter cube. So, it will be 25 kilo joules ok. So, answer is 25 here. Simple question, simple solution, right. Now, the elongation of the wire on the surface, see delta L is equals to F L by A Y. So, if F is equals to suppose M G, so we can say that elongation is directly proportional to G. So, elongation on the planet upon elongation on earth is equals to G on the planet upon G on the earth use this formula and get your answer here very simple delta l on planet is given this on earth is given this take the values and get your answer answer will come out to be 6 ok right. So, now this is a good question they have given us that there is a arrangement somewhat like this. Okay. So, what is technically happening first they close this switch right and keep this open. So, what will happen this will get completely charged up ok. So, after some time the current will be constant here ok. So, what is the steady state current can you tell me steady state current is EMF upon R I naught and what is EMF? EMF is 20 what is resistance 10 answer is 2 ampere. So, 2 ampere is the current that it will be there in through this inductor. Now, what they are trying to do is they are saying that let us open this, let us open this switch and let us close this switch now. So, what will happen now this will be discharged completely ok. So, they are saying that delta i is how much 2 ampere ok minus 2. Hmm. In how much time? 100 microseconds. 
सो वॉट इज एवरेज ई एम एफ इंड्यूस्ड सी एवरेज इन ई एम एफ इज माइनस एल डेल्टा आई बाई डेल्टा टी सो इट इज टू माइक्रो हेनरी माइनस टू इंटू टेन पार मिली हेनरी ओके डेल्टा आई इज माइनस टू अपॉन डेल्टा टी इज हंड्रेड इंटू टेन द पार माइनस सिक्स नाउ सॉल्व इट वॉट विल बी द आंसर ओ इट इज ट्वेंटी मिली हेनरी आई एम सो सॉरी इट इज ट्वेंटी मिली हेनरी राइट So answer will be forty into ten to the power three upon hundred. Okay, so it will be four hundred volts. Answer is coming out to be four hundred. Four hundred volts. Clear, everyone? Simple solution. Now this is also very good question. So let's do it quickly. So what is going to happen? The ray is going to strike like this, and then go like this. Okay? I'll show you. So it comes like this and goes like this. Now this angle is thirty degrees, right? And this angle is theta one. Okay? So let me draw this diagram again and properly explain it to you. So what is going to happen? This is seventy-five degrees. Right now, listen carefully. If this is thirty, this is going to be thirty degrees. So this is going to be sixty degrees. So this is going to be forty-five degrees. So this is going to be forty-five degrees. So this is going to be forty-five degrees. Right. So what is delta one? It is 180 degrees minus 2 theta 1, so it is 180 degrees minus 2 into 45 degrees will be 90 degrees. This is delta 1. Delta 2 will be 180 degrees minus 2 into theta 2. Theta 2 is how much? 30 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 60 degrees is 120 degrees. So overall, the deviation will be delta 1 plus delta 2 that is 210 degrees i hope it is clear to all of you absolutely clear any doubt no so in vernier calipers each so see what is the formula of least count in vernier caliper just remember it is one main scale division upon total number of divisions on the vernier scale right so this is given 1 by 20 cm upon 10 so it is 1 by 200 cm or i can say 1 by 20 mm right so 1 by 20 mm means 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 mm so answer will be 5 clear now here this is very simple what we will do we know that this uh sorry okay so this will not allow the current only this one will allow and so technically d3 and d1 will allow but d2 will not allow so the circuit will eventually become somewhat like this right okay so this is 10 this is 6 this is 6 this is 10 this is 2 this is 10 right so see this is 16 and 16 in parallel will become 8 and then 8 with 2 will become 10 right so it will look somewhat like this this is 2 this is 8 okay this is 10 so what will be the current current will be 10 upon 8 plus 2 that is 1 ampere so answer will be 1 clear yes or no <sighs> simple na because see they haven't given any current any resistance of the diodes the resistance of d1 and d2 and d3 is not given so frankly they will act as a pure conducting wire d1 and d3 but d2 will act as a infinite resistance and will not allow any current so this branch will become useless right so current will come and pass here and through this 
So, these branches 6 and 10, 16, 10 and 6, 16, 16 and 16 will become 8 in parallel plus 2 in series will become 10. So, the current will automatically become 1 ampere. Okay? Now, here see they are saying that at resonance, at resonance what happens this particular portion, okay, its impedance will become this particular portion's impedance will become infinite okay, and hence the current will become 0 in the circuit. Okay, remember this. Now, last is a very simple question using we will use simple concepts here, we will use the concept of Bernoulli's equation. See P1 plus half rho V1 square plus rho GH1 is equals to P2 plus half rho V2 square plus rho GH2. Okay. So, what will you do here guys? We will say that P1 minus P2 okay, is equals to half into rho into V2 square minus V1 square plus rho G into H2 minus H1. Right? Now, see carefully put the values. Here, P1 and P2 have they given anything? An ideal fluid of density this okay, flows smoothly through a bent pipe as shown in the figure that tapers in cross sectional area from A to A by 2. Okay. So, here it is area is A and here the area becomes A by 2. So, obviously the speed is V1 here. So, it will become 2V2, 2V1 here. Right. We can also say A1V1 is equals to A2V2 equation of continuity. So, A V 1 is equals to A by 2 V 2. So, from here can we say that V 2 is nothing but 2 V 1. So, we can use this equation also. So, there are two equations, equation number 1 and equation number 2 that we can use. Can you see that? Equation number 1 from Bernoulli's equation, equation number 2 from equation of continuity. So, V 2 is 2 V 1. So, we can write here 2 V 1. Cool. So, now, P1 and P2 have they given any information? The pressure difference between the wide and narrow sections are given. Achha, wide and narrow sections P1 minus P2 is already given 4100. So, you can write 4100 is equals to half into 800 into 2 V1 whole square minus V1 square. It will be 3 V1 square. Okay. Right. Plus 800 into G is 10 into difference in height will be what H2 is 0 minus 1 meter. Okay. So, now let us start solving this. It will become 4100 is equals to 400 into 3 V1 square minus 8000. Right. So, it will be 8000 plus 4000, 12100, 12100 is equals to 1200 V1 square, right. So, V1 square will be 12100 upon 1200, okay. So, after solving this, you can get the value of V1, clear. So, this is how the whole paper will be solved. This question was little lengthy or you can say it was a little bit time consuming, calculations were not so easy, but you, if you solve it carefully, you will get your answers. So, these are all the questions to be discussed in this paper. Do not worry, we will come with the discussion of the other papers also like this. Thank you so much. So, guys, just remember that you have to revise very, very basic concepts like the formula and the simple question on the formula. So, at least practice 3, 4, at least 5 questions. If you have time, 5 questions in every formula, every important formula, practice 5 questions. Simply, nobody will stop you to get, get a 90 out of 100 in physics. That is my guarantee. Anyways, so subscribe to our channel if you are watching the solution on YouTube and stay connected with us. We come up with a lot of good material on YouTube also, a lot of good content on YouTube. Recently, we have been discussing papers on YouTube of JWE mains. So, stay tuned with us. Study with us, revise with us. Thank you so much. Welcome to the video solution of chemistry section of grand test number 15. I am Nitin Verma, a chemistry faculty at Infinity Lanbar, Sri Chaitanya. So, let us get started with the solution. The first question was points 1, 2 and 3 in the following plot respectively correspond to 
most probable speed of which of the following gases at the specified temperature. So correct answer to this question guys is option 4 because we know that most probable speed is under root 2RT by M that means it is proportional to under root of temperature and molar mass right. So for nitrogen this ratio will be 300 by 28 for oxygen it will be 400 by 32 and for hydrogen it is 300 divided by 2 right the ratio. So you can see that this is minimum then this is more and this is higher so this is the correct answer. The plot of radial distribution functions for various orbitals of hydrogen atom are given below. The correct plot for 3s orbital. So you guys know that for 3s orbital the number of radial nodes is n minus l minus 1 that is 3 minus 0 minus 1 that is 2. So just look at the graph which has two nodes that is two points exactly where the uh, wave function becomes 0 right. So that is of course uh, the fourth option because here the graph is touching twice x axis where the wave function becomes 0 and the probability of finding electron also decreases to 0. Given below are two statements. In this the correct answer this both statement 1 and 2 are true. Yes, cupric metaborate is reduced to cuprous metaborate in the presence of luminous flame right and cuprous metaborate is obtained by heating boric anhydride and copper sulphate in a non-luminous flame right. So that is uh, basically the formation of metaborate. Here sucrose is a disaccharide and non-reducing sugar correct right but sucrose involves glycosidic linkage between beta glucose and alpha fructose no it's the other way around glucose is alpha form right and beta, uh, fructose is beta form so assertion is true but reason is false right. Then sodium hydride can be used as oxidizing agent of course not right statement 1 is false and statement 2 is true hydride donor it has it is a reducing agent not oxidizing agent. The lone pair of electrons on nitrogen and pyridine makes it basic yes nitrogen has a lone pair in pyridine so it becomes a Lewis base so this statement is correct. In this the compound the correct answer is option 1 uh, guys by the way so when you uh, react this compound with silver nitrate solution you get a pale yellow precipitate of AgBr right so remember that only halo alkanes give that haloarenes do not give that so this option cannot be the correct answer because it's a haloarene it will not form a agbr precipitate on reaction with alcoholic silver nitrate then the oxidation of a gives an acid right which easily forms anhydride so these are out of the picture because meta and para the distance is great they cannot undergo dehydration to form anhydride that leaves us with option a yes that is a correct answer because uh, when it reacts with uh, AgNO3 it gives a pale yellow precipitate of AgBr and on oxidation it gives you thalic acid right it gives you thalic acid right which can undergo dehydration to give you thalic anhydride so that is the correct answer order of basicity uh, for the following intermediates guys here the correct answer is option 1 because this is an alkyl carbon ion most basic then followed by this because this is also alkyl carbon ion so first and then fourth now here this is resonance stabilized right so it should be less basic so that is the second now out of third and fifth both are sp hybridized right right this is electronegative but the point is that this carbon is bonded to nitrogen which is slightly more electronegative than carbon so that is less basic so this is the correct answer right here polluted water may have a bod of or the order of 17 ppm yes correct biochemical oxygen demand of polluted water highly polluted water is above 17 ppm but this is for only biodegradable substances not for bio non biodegradable because that is what the name is biochemical oxygen demand right so here the correct answer is option 3 assertion is correct but reason is not correct in this question the correct combination is guys so you should know that uh, here the nickel is in plus 2 state which is basically 3d8 right so this is initially the configuration of d electrons in nickel right in the ground state cyanide is a strong field ligand it will pair up the electrons we will have d8 and diamagnetic and square planar right this is for uh, nicn4 right nico4 the oxidation number of nickel is 0 so nickel is 3d8 4s2 the s electrons of uh, this nickel are sent back to the d orbital leaving uh, 3d10 and 4s0 and then we can have sp3 hybridization and obviously tetrahedral geometry right 
and then the another complex given is nicl 42 minus now here also nickel is in plus 2 state right nickel is in plus 2 state here uh, chloride is a weak field ligand it cannot force the pairing of electrons we have to use the sp3 hybrid orbitals right so the correct answer to this question is option 2 right nicl 42 minus is paramagnetic because of the two unpaired electrons and nico4 is tetrahedral right because the electrons are forced to pair up and then uh, thereby vacating the s orbital a solution contains this much so cobalt here guys number of moles you can calculate 2.675 divided by 267.5 so this is 0 0.01 mole this is 0 0.01 mole right and you can see that silver nitrate is 4.78 so number of moles of silver nitrate is 4.78 divided by uh, 143.5 which if you will calculate will come out to be approximately 0 0.03 right 14 into 3 42 and then 3 so approximately 0 0.03 so you can see that uh, for 0 0.01 mole of the complex we are getting 0 0.03 mole of ag uh, cl that is thrice the amount that means there must be three chloride in the primary valency three chloride should be ionizable so this is the correct answer to this question here this uh, uh, memory based question the 3d series elements the only one is uh, copper right because of the high atomization enthalpy of copper metal which we give uh, as a reason given below the statements here uh, both assertion and reason are correct and reason is a correct explanation why because permanganate titration are not performed in the presence of hcl why because you might be using hcl just for the acidification but because KMnO4 is a strong oxidizing agent, it will oxidize chloride ion to chlorine gas, which is a side reaction, undesirable one. So we don't use HCl, we use instead use sulfuric acid. Here SO2 is adsorbed to a large extent than hydrogen, yes, because SO2 has a stronger attractive forces and therefore higher critical temperature, right? So yes, that is also true. Here a spontaneous process, the correct answer is option uh, 2, A matches with second, yes, for a spontaneous process, Gibbs energy of the system should be negative, B matches with third, a process with delta P is equal to 0 is isobaric and delta T is equal to 0 is isothermal, uh, C matches with fourth, uh, delta H of a reaction can be calculated as the bond energies of reactants minus bond energies of products. And finally, for exothermic reactions, delta H is negative. So these are basically uh, theoretical questions from thermodynamics. Anti-fertility drug Novistrol can react with, so for this you should know the structure, this is a structure, it can react with bromine water, right, because it has phenol as well as triple bond, both react with bromine water, anhydrous Zn Cl2 concentrated HCl, yes, again it can react, right, because it has uh, alcoholic moiety, right, and it can also react with neutral ferric chloride because it has phenolic part, so that is the correct answer. Here, uh, assertion is correct, but reason is not correct. Metallic character, yes, it decreases. Non-metallic character increases as we move from left to right in the periodic table, but that is because of the increase in electronegativity and not because of the ionization and electron gain enthalpy. So that is, uh, reason is not correct, right? Here, uh, you can observe that below 1200 Kelvin, the graph of carbon lies below, right? It has lower value of minus ln kp. So do you guys remember that standard Gibbs energy is minus RT ln kp, right? So if minus ln kp is lower, Gibbs energy is also lower. That means the Gibbs energy for the formation of carbon monoxide is uh, more negative as compared to the Gibbs energy for the formation of metal oxide, which clearly means that uh, carbon can reduce the metal oxide, right? So in Ellingham diagram also we discussed that any substance uh, can reduce all substances lying above it in the Ellingham diagram. So here the correct option is uh, third, right? At temperature below 1200, my reducing agent carbon lies below the metal. So yes, it can facilitate the reduction process. Here again, a memory based question. The option is three, sulfate laxative effect, nitrate, blue baby syndrome, lead, kidney damage and fluoride is brown mottling of teeth. We know that because of the inert pair effect in group 14, where the configuration, general configuration is NS2, NP2. So down the group, what happens due to the inert pair effect, plus two state becomes more stable, right? So this is the correct answer in this question, right? The following ligand is tetradentate because there are two nitrogen and two oxygen here, which can act as donor atom. Here, SO2 plus O2 gives SO3, all right? So in this question, what are we supposed to do? So it might look like a difficult question, but it is not, right? The initial pressure of SO2 is 250 millibar, that of oxygen is 750 and that of sulfur uh, trioxide is zero, right? 
when the reaction is complete the total pressure in the reaction vessel is by uh, let me tell you the answer uh, that is 875 and you can observe that uh, the limiting reagent here is of course sulfur dioxide right because for one mole of oxygen we need uh, twice of sulfur dioxide which we don't have right so it will react completely it will be zero now for two mole of sulfur dioxide one mole of oxygen reacts so for 250 125 will react so this will be uh, 625 right this will be 625 and whatever the amount of uh, sulfur dioxide reacts same will be the amount of so3 form because they're in the same stoichiometric ratio 2 is to 2 so if it reacts 250 it will be plus 250 so at equilibrium this will be uh, right this will be minus 250 guys at equilibrium it will be zero it will be uh, 625 and it will be 250 so the total pressure will be 625 plus 250 that is 875 that is the correct answer to this question an element with molar mass this is given so guys what you do first you apply this formula okay so density is uh, given to be 2.7 into 10 to the power 3 Z we have to find out molar mass is uh, given to be 2.5 into 10 to so minus 2 edge length is given to be 405 picometer right and Avogadro constant you know calculate the value of Z it will come out to be 4 now we know that 4 is FCC right and that is under root 2a uh, is equal to 4r so use this formula right uh, uh, edge length is given 405 picometer from here calculate the value of r the radius of the element will come out to be approximately 143 right picometer the spinoli magnetic moment of b2 so b2 guys it has uh, 10 electron plus matlab one electron is gone so there is nine electron one electron is odd right so sigma 1 is 2 sigma star 1 is 2 sigma 2 is 2 sigma star 2 is 2 right and after that uh, we have pi 2 px1 so there is one unpaired electron now whenever one unpaired electron you guys know the formula is under root n into n plus 2 which is under root 3 bore magneton so that is approximately 1.73 which can be expressed as 173 into 10 to so minus 2 bm the osmotic pressure of a solution of NaCl is 0.1 and that of glucose is 0.2 right so you know that at constant uh, temperature we can say that uh, final pressure and final volume is uh, p1v1 plus p2v2 right this we get from boils for gases now because ideal solution also the solute behaves like an ideal gas so we can say that the final osmotic pressure would be initial osmotic pressure for first and second so for NaCl the pressure is 0 0.1 volume is uh, 1 liter for glucose solution pressure is 0 0.2 volume is 2 liter divided by total volume which is nothing but 1 plus 2 right okay so this is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.5 divided by 3 so that's uh, 0 0.167 which is basically 167 into 10 to the minus 3 right this is a sparingly soluble salt now you guys know that KSP's uh, number of cation raised to the power number of cation number of anion raised to the power number of anion the solubility is x gram and that will be number of cation raised to the power number of uh, plus number of anion so you can solve this right and you can find the value it comes out to be 108 right yeah this number they are asking for that is 108 for the disproportionation reaction equilibrium constant is so we know that E naught is 0 0.0591 divided by n log kc they are asking about the equilibrium constant right so you just have to put n n is here one right because one electron is being transferred from one copper to another e naught you have to find out uh, copper is reducing to copper zero so we know that e naught cell is e naught cathode minus e naught anode right e naught cathode is copper plus one to zero which is given to be 0 0.52 right and e naught anode is uh, this plus 1 to plus 2 which is given to be 0 0.16 right so this is pretty uh, easy so you can uh, solve this right this comes out to be 0 0.36 volt right and you can substitute in this and find out what is the value of log so it comes out to be 14.4 uh, right you have, you have to calculate the logarithm i think they have not given in the question so you can uh, re-express that as 144 into 10 to the minus 1 in this reaction uh, compare it with the Rennes equation that is equal to log a minus activation energy divided by 2.303 rt so if you compare activation energy so 2.47 into 10 to the power 3 divided by t 
is activation energy divided by 2.303 the value of r is 8.314 right so and temperature so temperature temperature cancels out you can find right activation energy is this number multiplied by these two numbers so you will get uh, that will be approximately 47 kilojoule per mole all right then in this question uh, ferrous will be oxidized to ferric right and this will be reduced because it is in basic medium in basic medium uh, hydrogen peroxide produces hydroxide ions so x and y uh, they are 2 and 2 that is 4 in this permanganate reduces to mn2 plus in acidic medium right and uh, h2o2 will undergo oxidation that will form 5 oxygen and uh, you can see that the number of water molecule you can balance that will come out to be 8 h2o right so it will be 4 and then uh, 2 6 5 11 and 8 19 so that will be the correct answer here the transformation occurring in dumas method is given below so there are two carbons so this has to be two there are seven hydrogen so this has to be seven by two right because seven by two h2o so there are seven hydrogen so the value will be seven in this question in the carbonyl uh, cobalt carbonyl complex you know that there is one cobalt cobalt bond there is this bridging ligand there is this bridging ligand then there is this carbon monoxide ligands which we call terminal right non-bridging basically so that is the structure so the terminal co ligands are uh, six and the number of carbon carbon bonds is one so the correct answer is seven in this case is that clear guys okay so that's all in the solution guys thank you for watching bye bye yeah dear students welcome to infinity learn by sri chaitanya now let us see the math part discussion of dated 25 John. See the first question dear students, Z0 is the root of this quadratic equation which is x square plus x plus 1 equal to 0. I can say here, right, uh, undoubtedly I think you know this particular equation's roots are omega omega square, right. Now is Z0 is the root, omega power 81 is 1 because 81 is multiple of 3 this is also 1. So, this is 3 plus 6i minus 3i will become 3 plus 3i. So, the argument of this is tan inverse of y by x which is 3 by 3 which is tan inverse 1 my dear friends and hence it is pi by 4. Next my dear friends, you see the system of linear equations which a, b, c are non-zero real numbers has more than one solution. More than one solution means definitely infinity many solutions. Of these three equations here x coefficient is 1, you just take 1 minus 3 2 c. The next one you can take 2 2 3 a. This is going to be c my dear friends. The next this is 2 2 3 a. This is 3 minus 1 5 as well as you can say is equal to b. This is the one. Now with the help of this my dear friends, the help of first row make these two elements 0. So 1 minus 3 2 c and double r1 and subtract from r2 0. This becomes 8. This becomes 4 in the sense 3 minus 4 minus 1. This is a minus 2 c. The next one triple r1 and subtract from r3 0. This is going to be 8. 6 minus 5 is minus 1 b minus 3 c. My dear friends, to get infinitely many solutions, if you subtract here 0, here 0, it should, it should also be 0, b minus a minus 3c plus 2c is minus c is equal to 0. So, you are going to get b minus c is equal to a, my dear friends, b minus c is equal to a, okay, that is all. Next, you see this question, statement 1, this one you can easily write S1 sigma j is equal to 1 to 10, you can write j into j minus 1 into 10 cj, you can write 10 by j into 9 by j minus 1 into 8 cj. These two get cancelled. 10 into 9, 90. Sigma j is equal to, you can run from, you can say j is equal to, uh, you can say j, j naught are cancelled. If you put, this is j minus 2. You can put j is equal to 2 to 10, you will get 2 power 8 my dear friends. So, this answer is 90 into 2 power 8, this is correct, this statement is correct. Whereas, S2 in the sense, this is j into 10 by j into 9 cj minus 1, you write, this j gets cancelled, 
10 comes out, sigma j is equal to 1 to 10, 9 cj will become 2 power 9. So, 10 into 2 power 9 it is. So, this is wrong my dear friends. Actually, S2 is 10 into 2 power 9. Next my dear friends, S3 is going to be j square in the sense you can write j into j minus 1 plus j. That means sum of these two my dear friends. You can just take 2 power uh, 9 common. 45 plus 10, 55, 55 into 2 power 9, this statement is correct. So, S1 is correct, but S2 is wrong because this is wrong. So, S statement 1 is correct, statement 2 is false, third option is the right answer. Next friends, this you can simplify A cube plus B cube kind of, if you write after cancellation, you will get A plus B minus of, if you take root x common, if you cancel with root x plus 1, you will get root x plus 1 by root x this one whole power 10 my dear friends which is going to be x power 1 by 3 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 by root x whole to the power of 10. These two get cancelled that is x power 1 by 3 minus x power 1 by 2 whole power 10 it is. Now you need to find the coefficient of x power minus 5 that is n p is 10 by 3 minus m by p plus q is 5 by 6 my dear friends, 15 plus 10, 25 by 3 into 6 by 5 my dear friends, 3 2 times 5 2s are 10. So, the answer is going to be 10 c 10 into 1 power 0 minus 1 power 10 which is going to be minus 1 my dear friends, simple standard previous question it is. Now, this question you just take it as 100 square it is, you can write 100 plus 1, 100 minus 1, which is 100 square minus 1 square. Next one, 100 square minus 2 square, because 100 plus 2 into 100 minus 2, and so on, 100 square minus 99 square. So, 100 square comes 100 times it here, minus of, you can write 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square, and so on, 99 square is n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6 my dear friends. So, you can take this is 100 cube minus you can write here alpha is 3 199 into beta this is beta my dear friends. So, you can say here this is so 2 3 3 is 3 2 times 50 into 3 here this is 3300 by 2 is going to be my dear friends you can say yeah 1600 and so 50 right into 199. So, alpha is going to be 3, beta is going to be you say 1650. Now, the slope of the line passing through alpha, beta and origin is beta by alpha that is 1650 by 3 my dear friends, 550 is the answer. Next, you just check this statement, write the truth tables, you can observe that it is a tautology. Just pq two simple statements you can try. Next, here my dear friends, you just apply tan on both sides, you will get tan A plus tan B by 1 minus tan A tan B is equal to 1, which becomes A plus B is equal to 1 minus A B. You can write A plus B plus A B is equal to 1, add 1 on both sides, you will get 1 plus A into 1 plus B is equal to 2. Now friends, if you separate the sequence here, first terms A minus A square by 2 plus A cube by 3 minus A power by 4 you will get log 1 plus a plus this is second sequence b minus b square by 2 plus b cube by 3 this will become log of 1 plus b which becomes log of 1 plus a into 1 plus b my dear friends which we have seen this value is 2. So, log 2 is the answer my dear friends. Next a b is a vertical pole with b at the ground level and a at the top ok b here a here right then a man finds that angle of elevation of the point of A from the certain point on C is 60 degrees. Suppose here angle of elevation is 60 degrees. Now, he moves away from the pole along the line BC to a point D such that CD is 7. This is C, CD is 7 my dear friends. Now, from D angle of elevation is 45 degrees, here 45 degrees. Okay. Now, then the height of the pole, suppose this is h my dear friends, this complete distance is h, if this is 60, this is h by root 3 my dear friends. Okay. So, 
one simple equation h minus h by root 3 is going to be 7. Simple, you can solve h value, you will get the answer. Next, my dear friends, the random variable x has binomial distribution with mean n is equal to 8 and variance npq is equal to 4. So, you can say from this q is nothing but 4 by 8, q is 1 by 2, so p is 1 by 2, so n is equal to 16. Now, you just want px is equal to 0 plus px is equal to 1 plus px is equal to 2. You know how to write my dear friends because px is equal to r is ncr into q to the power of n minus r into p to the power of r. You just apply here in all the three cases equal to k by 2 power 16, you will get the value of k as 137. Next my dear friends, the median of 9 set of observations is 20.5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, sorry. Now, if each of the median means after arranging them in ascending order, the middlemost item. The largest four observations of the set increased by 2. Even though these are increased by 2, so these will be in the last four only. There is no change in the median. So, remains the same as the original set. Next, my dear friends, for this equation you can write, suppose this is equal to k. So, a becomes k by cos theta. So, b becomes k by cos of 2 pi plus theta, 2 pi by 3 plus theta and c is equal to k by cos of theta plus 4 pi by 3, you can write cos of 2 pi by 3 minus theta, you can write because 2 pi minus theta, you can write. Fine. Now, my dear friends, we, we are given a square plus b square plus c square is equal to 1, then the dot product is asking dot product of these two will become a b plus b c plus c a. If you just consider it my dear friends, these two product if you take k square comes out my dear friends, LCM will be cos theta into cos of 2 pi by 3 plus theta into cos of 2 pi by 3 minus theta and here you will get cos theta plus cos of 2 pi by 3 plus theta plus cos of 2 pi by 3 minus theta. You just apply cos a plus b plus cos a minus b to cos a cos b. If you write these two get cancelled, you will get k square into 0, which is 0, my dear friends. So, 0 is the answer here. Next, the vertices b, c of triangle a, b, c lie on the line. A line is given, vertices b, c are given on the line, okay, such that b, c length is 5. Now, the area of the triangle given, a point is given. Friends, a point is given 1 minus 1, 2, line equation is given. You know how to find the perpendicular distance from point to a line. How? We take the general point on this, take the drs of this line. Already drs of this line are available 3 is to 0. You apply dot product 0, you will get t value so that you will can find this point. And this distance gives the perpendicular distance from point to a line. Let it be height, my dear friends. Now, area is half into base BC is already given as 5 into height H. Half into this is 5, height you can anyhow find, you just apply, you will get the area, my dear friends. Next, so given this is a circle and this is a parabola, an equation of a common tangent to these two curves, my dear friends, is y is equal to x plus root 5. You see, any tangent to this parabola can be taken as y is equal to mx plus a by m. This statement is correct. Now, this should also be a tangent to our circle in the sense, you can write perpendicular distance from center is equal to radius. Center is 0, 0, radius is 5 by 2 under root. So, 0, 0 means root of 5 by m c by root of 1 plus m square is equal to root of 5 by 2. This is the one you just simplify you are going to get this equation itself in terms of m. So, we are correct because m square is going to be 1 or 2 that is what you are going to satisfy my dear friends. So, this both the statements are correct and correct explanation even. Next, this point falls inside the angle made by the lines one is y is equal to x by 2 is a line passing through origin with slope 1 by 2 and y is equal to 3x is another line with slope 3 y is equal to 3x is this y is equal to 1 by 2 into x by 2 is this given x positive. That means, our point must lie in this region my dear friends. What is that point? a comma a square, right. 
then we have to find the range of a simple my dear friends you take some testing point here say 1 comma 0 with respect to this line these two points lie must must lie either side suppose the line is x minus 2y equal to 0 if you substitute 1 comma 0 positive if you substitute a comma a square you have to get negative my dear friends second for this line 1 comma 0 and this point must lie same side this line is nothing but 3x minus y equal to 0 substitute 1 comma 0 positive so if we substitute this also you have to get positive 3a minus a square is positive solve these two in equations you will get the common solution here my dear friends i think 1 by 2 to 3 you are going to get some simple this is 2a a into 2a minus 1 must be negative this is a square into 3a less than 0 a into a minus 3 negative my dear friends a belongs to 0 to 3 a belongs to 0 to 1 by 2 0 to 1 by 2 is the common solution next my dear friends this differential equation you can do like by variable separable method so this is so y dx is here y dx is the here you can write here my dear friends so x cube minus x square into dy plus my dear friends y into x minus 2 into dx so you can just write dy by dx equal to 0 dy by dx is equal to my dear friends so minus of you can write dy by dx means you can write like you see i can say here otherwise so dy by y part is equal to dx x minus 2 pi this is x square into x minus 1 with minus dx my dear friends now variables are separated you can integrate its integral is you can see okay dy by y is equal to you just separate here my dear friends something by x minus 1 plus something by x plus something by x square dx you are going to get this x minus 1 coefficient means put x is equal to 1 here you are going to get 1 minus 2 minus 1 1 here here minus 1 here if you put here x is equal to 0 if you put minus of minus 2 by minus 1 minus 2 here now you just integrate you are going to get the solution plus c comes to find c you use y of 2 is equal to e then in that particular one you need to substitute y is equal to 4 that is it next my dear friends you see this particular matrix you are going to get d if you just find the determinant d plus 2 whole square minus sin square theta you are going to get you have to get the minimum value so you have to take maximum of this that is d plus 2 so minimum means so d plus 2 whole square minus 1 is the minimum possible it is possible in the sense my dear friends here among the options you can say d belongs to r theta belongs to 0 to 2 pi minimum value of delta a is given as 8 here my dear friends if you equate to 8 d plus 2 whole square is equal to 9 so d can be 1 or minus 5 so minus 5 is the answer next my dear friends the tangent to the curve y is equal to x plus sin y at a point a comma b is parallel to the line joining these two what is the slope 2 minus 3 by 2 by 1 by 2 minus 0 which is 1 so derivative is y dash is equal to 1 plus sin y derivative is cos y into y dash so my dear friends so 1 minus cos y into y dash is equal to 1 y dash is equal to 1 by 1 minus cos y friend this should be 1 in the sense cos y is 0 whenever cos y is 0 so that means y must be odd multiple of pi by 2 so when it is odd multiple of pi by 2 my dear friends so a comma b that means when this point sin cos b is equal to odd multiple of pi by 2 if you substitute a see b is equal to a plus sin b when sin b is odd multiple of pi by 2 so, sorry cos b is odd multiple of is 0 sin b will be 1 here so if you put 1 b is equal to b minus a is equal to 1 my dear friends of course plus or minus 1 so mod b minus a is equal to 1 that's all next my dear friends this you can rearrange this like regroup like 1 by 2 into integral pi by 6 to pi by 3 tan power 4x into sin power 4 3x dx my dear friends derivative of u into v 
so which is tan power 4x into sin power 4 3x between the limits pi by 6 to pi by 3 and you can write 1 by 2 here this is the one now you just substitute the value you will get the answer next my dear friends even this equation also you can rearrange like uh, x dy minus y dx by x square you just divide with x square friends plus uh, d of you can write 3 x square dx is equal to you can write y dx plus x dy you can rearrange my dear friends you see y dx minus x dy you can arrange so that this becomes d of y by x plus 3 x square into dx is equal to d of x y my dear friends you just integrate you will get the answer right to find integration constant use y of 3 is equal to 3 you can find y of 4 next d square x by dy square is the standard one so you will get it as d by dy of dx by dy which is nothing but my dear friends d by dy of 1 by this is dx by dy 1 by dy by dx so 1 by x integral is minus 1 by x square into its derivative with respect to y my dear friends so d actually i want d by dy of dx by dy so better you write like this my dear friends this is a standard one so you can take d by dy of dx by dy you can write like d by dx of dx by dy into dx by dy you can write here d by dx of you can write 1 by dy by dx into dx by dy so 1 by x derivative is minus 1 by x square into friends yeah so it's a derivative d square y by dx square into dx by dy you can write this dx by dy as 1 by dy by dx so minus 1 you see dy by dx power minus 3 minus d square y by dx square that's all my dear friends next i can say a point z moves you see it's clearly indicates that you just take 2 comma 0 is a point here minus 2 comma 0 is a point here first two point to second point you have to join such a way that it is a circular arc where this makes an angle pi by 4 here that means at the center cot subtend double the angle at the center if it is pi by 4 above it must be 90 degrees my dear friends moreover this is the center radius we know that this is going to be 4 so you can say 4 by root 2 2 root 2 2 root 2 is the radius right and height is going to be you can say 2 uh, ac by b that is 2 is the height if you just calculate this so this point is going to be 0 comma 2 but the required circle center is 0 comma 2 now i want z can be any point on the periphery z2 9 root 2 minus 2i so you can take my dear friends so this 9 root 2 this 9 root 2 comma 2 plus 2 you can write so this is the point you just find we just want the distance of z then the minimum value of this from the circumference in the sense if this point is here from the from the center you find the distance and subtract the radius so this distance square is you see this is nothing but z can be this value is nothing but the minimum value of this you just find the distance between these two that is 9 root 2 minus 0 whole square plus uh, 2 plus 2 whole square this is this is going to be you can say my dear friends 9 root 2 z minus of i can write plus 2 so 2 here 2 minus 2 0 square this is the distance under root in fact minus 2 root 2 this is the thing you are going to so this distance is going to be you can say 7 root 2 that's all next you see consider the quadratic equation let s be the set of all integral values of c for which one root of the equation lies in 0 to 2 0 to 2 and other root lies between 2 and 3 undoubtedly my dear friends so you can take like f of 0 into f of 2 must have opposite sign 
f of 2 into f of 3 must have opposite sign. You just apply those two conditions, you will get an equation in C, you can find the number of elements of S here, you will get an interval. So, you can find the number of elements in S. Okay. Next my dear friends, a number is called palindromic, you know already palindromic, the number of 6 digit palindromes which are divisible by 55 my dear friends, number of 6 digit palindromes divisible by 55. 55 is 5 into 11, basically it must be divisible by 5 and 11. Divisible by 5 means last digit can be 0 or 5. If you put 0 here, you have to put 0, it cannot be a 6 digit number. So, last digit is fixed 5, so it is also 5. My dear friends, if I write AB here, here also you have to get AB, why? So, 5, 5 match, this is BA, it should be these two same, these two same, these two same. So, if A, B are filled, B, A will be filled. Moreover, my dear friend, to be divisible by 11, what should happen? Alternate is 5 plus B plus A, this is, this will also be A plus B plus 5. Perfectly, it is divisible by 11. So, the only thing is you have to fill these two digits. These two can be filled in 10 into 10, 100 ways, my dear friends, 100 ways. Next, so he is asking the same. How many numbers? x, y, z be the positive. You know, my dear friends, x cube y power 4, z power 5 means you can apply a m, g m inequality. This is minimum possibility is when you know x by 3 is equal to y by 4 is equal to z by 5. Because you can take 3 x by 3 is 4 y by 4 is 5 z by 5. So, you can apply a m, g m. You are going to get this is less than or equal to a m greater than or equal to g m you will get, but equality means all these things will be equal. Suppose it is equal to k, x is equal to 3 k, y is equal to 4 k, z is equal to 5 k. So, 12 k is 12 means k is equal to 1 my dear friends. If k is equal to 1, I can say this is going to be x is 3, y is 4, z is 5. That is all x cube plus y cube plus z cube you can find 3 cube, 4 cube, 5 cube sum. Next. A D of this problem we have done already in the previous papers. You see, you take X Y plane, my dear friends. A D and B C B two vertical planes, poles at A and B respectively on the horizontal ground. A B so A D is eight, B C is eleven. So you just take X axis here. So this is zero comma eight. This is we can say A B length. Then the distance in meters of a is not given. Suppose this is X, my dear friends. Suppose A B is A B given, A B from the point A says that M D square this is A D B C are vertical poles at A and B respectively on the horizontal ground given A D is 8, B C is 11 my dear friends and A B 10 it is given that is what I am checking for 10 0 this is 10 comma 11. Okay. Now, you just take this x as some x comma, <coughs> x comma 0 let it be point m. I just want m d square plus m c square, this is to be I can say minimum. So, my dear friends, this is x square plus 8 square, you can say plus this is x minus 10 whole square plus 11 square, this is. You just simplify my dear friends, you will get quadratic in x, you can find minimum of this when x is equal to 5 because minus b at minus b by 2a it will be that is going to be 5. x is equal to 5 means from a it is at 5 units distance. Next, you see my dear friends, we want this limit take logarithm on both sides. Suppose this is L, log L is equal to you can write limit n tends to infinity minus 4 by n square into log of u n. Log of u n means limit n tends to infinity minus 4 by n square into log of this in the sense r comes forward okay r into you can write log of 1 plus r square by n square this product my dear friends product in the sense product of this means each product sum it this becomes summation of this so limit n tends to infinity you can write minus 4 outside which is 1 by n into r by n here this becomes sigma log of 1 plus r by n whole square 
where r runs from you can say 1 to n. So, this is integral 0 to 1 x log of 1 plus x square dx by integral as limit of a sum. Why do not you take 1 plus x square as t then it becomes integral 1 to 2. So, 2 a half you write 2 x dx will become dt log t my dear friends. Log t integral is t log t by e. We can just write half t log t by e between the limits 1 to 2. You substitute you will get the answer log l value from which you have to find l value. Next two perp the perpendicular distance from origin to the plane containing the two lines. Here, when you are given two lines in a plane you just take the cross product of first vector second vector you know two drs just take the cross product you will get the normal drs and it has to pass through you see the perpendicular distance from origin to this plane plane equation you want you know plane normal and you know one of the points on it minus 2 2 5 you can find plane equation you will get like ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to 0. Now, perpendicular distance from origin means you can apply the formula mod d by root of a square plus b square plus c square you will get the answer here. Next my dear friends in a workshop there are 5 machines and the probability of any one of them to be out of service is 1 by 4. The probability that at most 2 machines will be out of service on the same day you see out of service say suppose success 1 by 4 failure 3 by 4 out of how many machines we can say 5 machines n is equal to 5. So, he is asking probability that at most 2 machines at most 2 means p x is equal to 0 plus p x is equal to 1 plus p x is equal to 2 at most 2 successes ok yeah out of service right this is the answer you just simplify binomial distribution already p x is equal to r means you just apply n c r into q to the power of n minus r into p to the power of r next my dear friends it is simple equation we can just write yeah these two one unit these two one 2 cos 5x by 2 cos 5 c minus d by 2 which is 3x by 2 into 2 cos 5x by 2 you can write into my dear friends cos x by 2 you just make it equal to 0 where x is in the interval 0 to 2 pi you just make it equal to 0 where so generally every cost becomes 0 at odd multiple of pi by 2. So, you can equate this so then you are going to get 7 solutions which satisfy this in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Next the points you see lie on intersection these two also lie in this parabola any point on this you can take like suppose x is equal to a my dear friends y is equal to root 3 a it is. Yes, this point must lie on the ellipse equation which is a square by 16 plus 3 a square by b square is equal to 1 x square plus y square a square plus 3 a square is equal to 4 b my dear friends. From these two you can eliminate a square here and this is 4 a square right 4 a square is equal to 4 b a square is equal to b. If you write a square is equal to b, you are going to get b value my dear friends from this ok that is it you are going to get b value. So, that is all about my dear friend this paper is comfortably can be done easily right dear students all the best.